What's up, Zach Oates here, author, entrepreneur, and customer relationship guru. Welcome to Give an Ovation, growth strategies for restaurants and retailers, where we find industry leaders to share their secrets to grow your business. This podcast is sponsored by Ovation, a customer experience and marketing platform that gets you more reviews, more feedback, and more revenue. Want to learn more? Visit OvationUp.com. Welcome to today's episode of Give an Ovation. My name is Zach Oates, founder and CEO of Ovation, along with Seth Weinert, who is our head of sales here at Ovation. And we're going to discuss uh, about restaurants and retailers, about reviews, loyalty, customer experience, marketing, and we're going to do it all in less than 15 minutes, okay? Um, But for those of you that are joining us for the first time, quick background, I grew up in the restaurant retail space, got into the high-tech space. And what I saw was a crazy gap. Online, you have all these incredible tools to get people to come back and to engage with them. And in the brick and mortar, in the restaurant and retail space, it's so challenging. So what we've done is we've created tools to help engage with customers, measure experience, and get them coming back to drive that value, drive that revenue. So what we're going to do is we're going to tackle these topics today with Seth. A little bit of background on Seth. He is a friend, co-founder, and as I said, our head of sales here at Ovation. He has a passion for the tech space and loves to see businesses succeed with cutting-edge technology. He's handled everything from demand generation, account development, direct sales, product management, and has worked with thousands of restaurants and retailers around the country. When he's not talking tech, he enjoys rock climbing up mountains and skiing down fresh powder with his lovely wife and wild toddler. So, Thanks, Zach. It's been a good ski year. It has been. Yes. We're based here in Utah, so up in the Rockies, and it's been uh, it's been awesome. So to kick things off, Seth, what are you, you've talked to thousands of restaurants and retailers. What are some of the biggest struggles that you that you've seen in talking to these thousands of restaurants and retailers? You know, when I look at this like brick and mortar space in general, you've got these you know specifically retailers and restaurants that that we're working with. It's it's crazy to me how you can build a business and have all these transactions happening and not even know who these customers are. And so we, we like to sum it up like the anonymity, right? The unknown, mm-hmm. you know, these, these restaurants and retailers, they don't know who their customers are. Yeah. They're walking through the door, they're dining or, you know, buying a, a shirt, they leave. And that business doesn't know who they are. Doesn't know, you know, what their experience is like, doesn't know how to bring them back. And that is a huge disconnect. Like when you look at the online world, they know who their customers are. You go and shop on Amazon. I mean, they know what I've clicked on. They know what I've looked at. They know what types for of better, things. For better, for worse. For better, for worse, right? <laughs> <laughs> but at, at the end of the day, they remark it to me, right? And, yeah. and, and based on my behaviors and, you know, brick and mortar is, is here to stay. People like to go out and eat. They want to go out. They want to socialize. They want to be there. But the competition continues to rise. Yeah. And how do you stand out? Well, you're going to stand out if you know who your customers are, because guarantee the person next to you doesn't. Yeah. Just like today, right? I went to lunch and I've been there, you know, I've probably been to this restaurant 20 times and they have no clue who I am. They have no clue how many times I've been there. And it's just like, and I feel like a stranger every time I'm walking in, even though the food's familiar, right? Totally. So, um, so going along with that, once you find out about a place and, and nowadays you find out online, right? That's how you find out about restaurants, retailers, where where should I go to eat? What's around me? So with that, every time you type it in, every time I look something up, whether it's Siri doing her best to help me out (laughs) or whether I'm just, you know, popping something up because I'm hungry, reviews come up, right? Uh So talk to me about what you've experienced with with reviews. What are people talking about out there? What's, What's the story on reviews now? Yeah, and with with review, it's an interesting topic because it's been it's something that's been around for a while, and I think you know in the last, I would probably say last three to four years, it's it's become more of like a heavy topic, and in restaurants, really like the last couple of years, it's been a really popular topic that everyone's talking about, and you know with with reviews, I think um, there's more to it than just having a good rating, mm. right? Okay, you're at four point five, great. There, there's a lot more to it. And I so think, I'm, not, I'm not done if I have a 4.5. You're, you're not. You're not done. And the thing is, if, if you think you're done and you go and search for, you know, let's say you own a burger shop and you search for the best burger in Salt Lake City, Utah, and you're wondering why you're not up top, well, I'll tell you why. Because you stopped focusing on online reviews. The reason why is 
the algorithms are looking at how many reviews you're getting per month, not just what's your rating, but is this something that you're, that you're nurturing, that you're focusing on? That's what these algorithms want to see. So if someone's listening to this, someone's watching this, they have a restaurant, they have a retail shop. What do they do? They how, solicit reviews. How do you how they do focus you? on it? First off, you got to be above four. You got to be four stars or above. Mm-hmm. Reason why this is kind of, you know, reviews one one If you're below four stars and someone uses the word best in their search, you're not even going to show up. So that's like one one Be a four stars and above. Table stakes, four stars. Table stakes. Now I'm above four stars. You're above four stars. How, think about strategy on how can you get more reviews per month? Mm-hmm. Obviously, as the business owner, there's only so much you can do. How do you create a culture internally that really drives getting your fans to share more about you and tell the world about you? Reward them. I mean, this is this is huge, right? Like, if people are searching for pizza, burger, Italian food, whatever the category your your folks that are or clothes or shoes, whatever it is in your area, you want to rank higher. Well, we we've seen success with creating you know employee engagement programs around soliciting this, telling people to leave you a review, because by doing that, if you're getting more reviews than the person next to you, regardless of whether or not they have a 4.8 and you have a 4.3, you, you'll still rank higher. So, and along with those reviews, one thing that I found is that when I am like promoting a business, I find myself to be more loyal towards that business, mm-hmm. right? So along with, you know, in our modern age of, of technology, it's no longer about those like punch cards and yeah. filling up your wallet with that. So what is loyalty nowadays? How do you define loyalty? And and uh, again, what, what can listeners do to increase their loyalty? Yeah, the, the loyalty game is getting harder, right? You know, it used to be just these, these punch cards. And you get some stamps, you'd save, you know, you'd, you'd lose a lot of them or you'd find some and you didn't have this punch card. And yep, this, yep. you bring in three punch cards, like, hey, this equates to yeah. three burrito, right? You know, uh-huh. like that used to be the game. My buddy one time gave a homeless guy, a punch card that was all filled out, right? Like right. Of giving him money, give him the filled there you punch go. card, right? Yeah, that's, he, that's he, what he used to be. You know? yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's, it's, it's evolved so much more than how many points do you have at a restaurant or a business? I mean, I have points at so many places and I, I only know the points that I have to like one. Yeah. Right? But what, what changes behavior, Right it's not the amount of points that your consumers are building. That is a component to mm-hmm. loyalty. That is like the gamification that resonates with a percentage of customers. But going back to the, the main pain point that these businesses have is really knowing who their customers are and building relationships. Yeah. Right. If you can create five positive experiences in the first month of a customer entering your store, that's going to drive so much more loyalty and and relationship driven relationships that drive business than a customer coming in and just just getting points so it's more to it right like yeah have a point system that resonates that captures a good percentage but you want this omni-channel approach that leads to you interacting with these customers in multiple different ways and at the end of the day it's experiences the more positive experiences you have the more likely you are to be in love with that brand so going along with that, is it is it important to measure experience? And like how how do you measure that experience? Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of different ways, right? You could you can measure experience based on like software and, and sentiment. You can have, you know, employee engagement. Back in the day, you have the maitre d that taps your table and says, Hey, how are things going? Um, obviously that's not extremely scalable, right? right. So having tools in place that help you naturally collect customer experience. I mean, if you think about it, like going back to online reviews, consumers are three times more likely to leave a bad review. Mm -hmm. Obviously in this world today, we like to vent, right? But the other side of that, why did they go leave you a bad review? They don't have any other way to to communicate with you. Yeah, that's it. It's like, it's, yeah, it's because I I was at a a restaurant with my in-laws and uh, the manager comes up and says, how was your meal? Father-in-law says, oh, it was great. Manager walks away. First thing the father-in-law says is, I'm never even hearing that. Right? And how many times have you done that? I've done that too, right? I, we I, were, I'm, I'm we so were, guilty. We were that. at a burger place. Yeah. In uh, we California. Was one, but you know. Yeah, it was in LA. <laughs> Manager comes up and he walks away. And I'm like, man, these fries are cold. This burger is like underdone. Yeah. And you were like, yeah, I don't like this either. And someone was like, yeah, I didn't like that either. And it's like, 
this is what we do, right? Yeah. Like our that's our whole career is, yeah. is in this restaurant retail customer experience space. And even us, we're like, uh, I don't want to like cause a fuss around totally. it, you know? If your only way to get feedback is through your online reviews, you're missing the mark. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, you you need some type of feedback loop. I mean, feedback loop 1.0 is through your employees. Not great, not trackable, not super scalable. You don't really know how effective it is that typically still going to go online. Get, create a Google My Business, not a Google My Business, but a like a Google, Google phone number. Oh. Or Google form. Google phone. Hey, text us here. Have feedback. I mean, people want to talk through SMS. That's got a 98% open rate. Like it's a highly effective way. Create a Google form with like a QR code. Like give, make it very apparent in your location that your consumers have a way to communicate with you mm -hmm. outside of online reviews. Yeah. Now, even on top of that, you're collecting some data. You know who they are. Yeah. You can engage with them. I mean, that's, that's, that's going to create so much more like loyalty as you build those relationships than, you know, only feedback loop being your online reviews and your only loyalty component being them receiving points. Cause that's what everyone else is doing. So you stand out, right? So along with that customer data here in the last couple of minutes, what, what can, um, as far as marketing goes, right? Mm -hmm. You talk about collecting data, you talk about text marketing, talk yeah. to us about like, how do we leverage? There's, there's this sea of things that we can do, right? There's yeah. pay-per-click, there's social, yeah. there's, you know, email. Where, you know, you talk about texting. Why texting? How does that fit into the marketing tool set? For sure. So I feel like every every medium that we use has its place, mm -hmm. you know? And I think um, things have evolved a lot. The way that we interact with consumers as the world evolves, as technology evolves, it needs to adapt, um, email back in the day used to be like the go-to. Yeah. Well, what's happened uh -huh. in the last 10 years, open rate, spam rate, everything's just plummeted right now. There's still a place like you have a long form brand awareness article that you want to send out newsletter, whatever it is. Email is a great channel for that. Uh, when it comes to text, that's like when, when I, when I want to invite my friends to come to my house today, am I going to email them? No, right. No, right. I'm going to, I'm going to shoot them a text. <clears throat> Um, and so we found like with the way that data is trending text to be that solution, which that gives you a lever you can pull to drive transactions. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's what is your goal with your marketing? Is it to build awareness? Is it to, you know, um, is it to drive someone to your store today? And then from there, we need to figure out what's the best medium to deliver that. The really cool thing is we're seeing with, with text marketing, we're seeing 98% open rates. We're seeing them to be opened, every text to be open, 95% of them open within the first three minutes. Mm. And we're seeing anywhere from like five to 10 plus percent redemption rates, depending on what type of text it is. Yeah. Right. And, and, and a lot of people think like, well, I don't like to give deals. I don't want to give discounts. You don't have to, right? It's about staying top of mind and creating that experience. You do not have to get deals. Because oftentimes when you do a timely text, the right time of the day, that's a whole other topic of like how to do it, when to do it. You're getting, you're, you're becoming top of mind and that's, what's going to bring them into your store. Now you don't even have to do a deal. Yeah, totally. So, so takeaways from this um, one, make sure that you have a culture that you have a way for people to leave reviews, right? Mm -hmm. Two, utilize loyalty as more than just loyalty, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just about, getting the points about building that relationship. Um, three, really make sure that you're providing ways to get people to, to give you feedback, right? And yeah. I love your comment. If, you're fo if the only way for customers to tell you how their experience was was online reviews, you're missing the mark, right? Yeah. And in employees, it only goes so far with that, yeah. right? And then <clears throat> in terms of marketing, it's, um, yeah, I mean, utilizing text marketing as that lever to drive people in for sure utilize email for the top of mind and i was talking with a with a, a restaurant marketing expert the other day and he was talking to me about how if you want to get new people in you could run pay-per-click ads on facebook and instagram but you do have to like give away the farm right like really oh, yeah. what he said is the only thing they found to be successful is when people are giving away like a free burrito or get a free t-shirt mm -hmm. by typing in your email. And that's the only way they've been able to get people from 
PPC pay per click to come into the store. Right? Yeah. So try it out. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that you nailed it on the head. It's not about the reviews, or the loyalty, or the customer experience, or the texting. It's about building that relationship. Totally. Right? Um, and so everything that that we've been talking about here um, is something that we really focus on at Ovation, where we want to help you to to build a relationship. And so every single uh, every single episode, we give an ovation, and usually it's to our guest. Uh, but this episode, we're giving an ovation to you guys, the ones who are building it, who are yeah, keeping yeah. America fed, the ones who are getting out there and keeping America clothed, um, because you guys are the crazy ones who are actually doing it. You've launched the brick and mortar location. Growing up, I know how hard it is to do it. And so you guys get our ovation today. Woo. There we go. Anyway, thank you guys. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. Glad you're with us today and thank you. Thank you to the risk takers, the troublemakers, the crazies who are keeping this world clothed and fed. You're the ones who deserve an ovation. Again, this podcast was sponsored by Ovation. To see how we can help you grow your business, go to ovationup.com. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, remember to give someone in your life an ovation today.